Hi, I'm Jody Daly, and this is Let's Talk, where consumers like all of us tackle the topics that matter, like sleep. Along with food and water, it's the most basic of needs. But with $350 million a year spent on over-the-counter sleep aids, it seems like a lot of people aren't getting the sleep they want. And my guests today know only too well that situation. So stay awake, don't go away. Looking for a great way to keep your weekly shopping budget in check? Choose your favorite supermarket store brands and you will be amazed at the savings you'll see at the register. Made from the same quality ingredients as national brands, store brands really add up to great savings. Give them a try and add money to your pocketbook. Sleep. We need it. And mostly everybody wants more of it. But unfortunately, nearly 70 million people suffer from some kind of sleep disorder. So it seems that drifting off isn't as easy as it should be. With me today is Dr. Janet Kennedy, who's been treating sleep disorders for decades. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Frank Massa, who is no 9 to fiver, and Nancy Lobby, who has turned her nocturnal problems around. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But Frank, I want to start with you. What time do you start your job in television news? 3 a.m. 3 a.m. What time do you have to be at work? Well, we go on the air at 4 a.m., but I'm there at 3 a.m. You're there at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. What time do you go to bed? Anywhere between 7.30 and 8.30 at night. So if I'm doing the math right, you get how much in 24 I get hours? A, I get up at midnight. So anywhere between three and a half to four hours a, a night. How, I'm, I'm not even going to ask you how you exist, but what has it done to you physically, emotionally, and mentally, not getting any sleep? Physically, it makes you gain weight, lose weight, depending upon how much you eat. You can't eat that much. Uh, emotionally, it uh, makes you irritable more than anything else. Like you get very annoyed if, if you're not on the rails with what you are doing every day. Sure. You have to maintain your energy. You have to be very paced. And if you're not, yeah. it affects you. And you have kids, too. It's yes. not like you're just you know, going home to take a nap. You no. have things you have to do all, all day long. Nancy, I imagine that um, some of those things must have seemed very familiar because you had a tough time sleeping for a long time, right? Absolutely. And it affects you emotionally, mentally, your mental acuity, your physical feeling about um, being awake, not just being awake, but um, how you respond in terms of eating, the, the digestion of the food, the metabolism that you have, all of it. I am detecting a lot of the same anxiety you were talking to, about with me on the phone when we chatted about this. You said that you had anxiety about getting into bed. Why? Exactly. So when you tr have a history of getting into bed and the torture of trying to go to sleep or if you fall asleep, staying asleep, and you know how bad that is, you don't really want to go to bed. You don't walk into that situation willingly. Yeah. So I would avoid going to bed until I was so absolutely tired that I knew that the second my, my head hit the pillow that I would be asleep. So luckily, this, her story has a little better ending because you did go to a, a sleep study clinic. Yes. You got help. And then you also had sort of like an aha moment. What was that? Right, right. So when I was in the sleep study, I was uh, in my torturous sleep. Uh, with sleep apnea, you can sleep about five minutes at a time until you choke yourself awake. Mm -hmm. They woke me up. I was really pretty much already awake. But somewhere in those five minutes, they came to me and said, we're putting the sleep, the mask on you because we know that you have sleep apnea. So they put the mask on me, which opens up your airway as you're sleeping. And it was like, I, I, the sleep in that time as I was drifting into that sleep was something that I hadn't experienced in about 11 years. Wow. So that feeling, I was almost floating. I felt like I was looking at myself in the bed and just in this very peaceful state. So now you are sleeping better. Sleeping better. With a CPAP. I, yes, with, with the CPAP. Yep, okay. And I can sleep long periods of time and I don't avoid it like I used to. <laughs> Which is good. Does this sound familiar to you, Dr. Kennedy? Absolutely. Sleep apnea is so prevalent and people often resist going to get tested to see um, what's really happening. And not everyone so willingly will accept wearing a mask, but it's true that once you correct it, it, it changes your life. And we're looking at two different disorders here. Uh, Nancy's was physical with the sleep apnea, and then Frank's is situational. Absolutely. So these are two situations. If you would, could you tell me why both the quantity and quality of sleep is so important? 
Sure. While we sleep, our body is restoring and really cleaning up the damage of the day, whether that's muscle repair um, or just even cleaning cleaning sort of the debris out of the brain that accumulates during the day. Does it take longer than three hours? It does. Frank? Um, you know, <laughs> I'm in trouble, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no, it's no surprise that Frank is chronically sleep deprived, and that does take an emotional and physical toll on the body. He mentions um, weight gain, um, cognitive um, sort of confusion, yeah, memory issues. Yeah, like blah and, and kind of fuzzy head, that kind of thing. On the later part of the day, yeah. yeah. So the top end of the day, I'm pretty good. So we still have you for a little longer? Just to maybe <laughs> another couple of hours. Well, good, That's about because it. when we come back, um, we're going to talk about the single most important thing that you can do to get the kind of sleep you need. So don't go away. Supermarkets can get pretty confusing nowadays. So many aisles, so many products. How can you save time and money when you shop? Get into the habit of buying your store's store brands. You get the same quality as national brands and save at the cash register. No apps, no coupons, just money in your pocket. Give them a try and smile your way through the supermarket. Welcome back. We're talking about something that a lot of us take for granted, and that's a good night's sleep. So what we've been talking to Frank. Frank gets no sleep except for like a nap. Nancy has taken care of her sleep issues. And by the way, you look really good, Nancy. So you look like you've gotten a good night's I sleep. I did get a good night's sleep <laughs> Did last you get night. like If I have my machine, I sleep. Okay, and the yeah. machine is the CPAP machine, exactly. which helps you breathe. And Frank, did you get a good night's sleep last night? About three hours. Great. So you got a nap. Yep. Unbelievable. Now, we, we talk about sleep hygiene a lot. What is sleep hygiene, and how does that help people get to sleep? Sleep hygiene is essentially just good sleep health. So that means making sure that you're allowing enough time to sleep, eating well, exercising, not spending excessive amounts of time in bed awake, um, making sure that you're giving yourself enough of a wind down, a bedtime routine to allow the body and the mind to um, sort of settle down before sleep. And turning off the computer Absolutely. and the cell phone and any of the blue light, is that? Is Absolutely, that so blue light that comes from our devices, particularly from devices that are close to our faces, like laptops, cell phones, tablets, that they emit blue light straight into your eye, which right. then goes straight to your on-off switch for melatonin, which is what signals the body that it's time to sleep. Now, do you guys have a wind-down routine? I mean, you I do. What do you do? I right. do. I mean, I give myself a half an hour of getting into the bed and just letting myself just rest. Um, and the devices definitely work against you but for me sometimes they work for me because I'm scrolling and as I scroll I go into a hip like almost like a hypnosis right and I just it puts me right out interesting yep interesting and did, did you have to change your sleep hygiene when you got your CPAP and things started going absolutely wrong? because as I had said before I didn't want to go to sleep right so even after I had the, the CPAP my mental my mindset was that sleep was still a problem so I didn't want to get into bed but I used Breathing exercises, meditation, and uh, gratitude. So Gratitude? Uh, yes. Well, that's really neat. Yeah, so I would spend time thinking about the people in my life that were really important to me and what they were doing and mentally thanking them for being in my life. That's really, that, you know, yeah. that, that sounds like a good, a, pr a good process. I think that's great. It's really helpful to just give your mind a pleasant place to go so that it's directed away from the anxious thoughts that might be troubling you either from your um, performance anxiety about sleep or the things you need to do the next day or the conversations that didn't go the way you wanted them to. Mm -hmm. Any way that your mind can wander and you end up ruminating will increase your stress response. And you talked, we talked on the phone and two things stuck with me, sleep resilience and sleep perfectionism. And Getting rid of sleep perfectionism is a really strong indicator that you'll get better sleep. Tell us why. Because we tend to have a very perfectionist idea about what sleep should be. We should fall asleep as soon as our head hits the pillow. We should sleep all night without waking up. We should wake up in the morning feeling awesome. And if 
we fall short of that in any way, then we feel like we have failed and we, we aren't getting the sleep we need. That then creates performance anxiety. And performance anxiety around sleep is a sleep killer because when we're anxious, the brain believes that there's a problem. And you're kind of like, why am I asleep? Why am I not asleep? What time is it? How many hours do I have? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And the brain's response to that is to actually give you adrenaline to keep you awake to solve the problem, yeah. which is exactly what you don't need. Well, do you guys have a perfectionistic, perfectionistic kind of outlook on sleep? Or do you just go for it and whenever you can get it? If I know that I have to get up the next morning, I can't sleep because I tell myself, you better be asleep now or you won't get yeah. seven hours. Now it's six hours, now yeah. it's five hours. It sounds so. like that commercial. I've yeah. seen those commercials. How about you, Frank? I mean, I, I for the most part, uh, I do the best I can with what I, when I have time. Yeah. So especially with two little kids, once I get home, my real day actually does start. When I get home at noon, my day is actually going straight until 8 o'clock at night, depending upon if my wife can help out because she's, she goes to work right. too every once in a while because she's home with the kids primarily all the time. So, so what the other thing you had talked about too is something that might benefit both Frank and Nancy is sleep resilience. And what is that? Sleep resilience just means that you roll with it when you have a rough night. I guess you do that all the time. Mm -hmm. Pretty right. much every day. Yeah. Right. So you don't have yeah. a lot of anxiety about sleep because you're just getting it when you can My get it. My anxiety level actually went down quite a bit over the past four years because I realized no matter what I have to do, there's time for it because I know I have to get this sleep in one way or another. If I don't get the sleep in, nothing's going to be done the way it needs to be done. Right. Any suggestions for Frank, doctor? Oh, Frank. <laughs> I think that for, for Frank, the real task is finding more time to sleep and thinking about it. So you do what you can do now, and then you think about the, the next few months. And then what can, what, when are you going to hit milestones where things can change and you can make sleep more of a priority? I think I'm going to wait until my kids are teenagers. Mm. I, I might actually you may get be dead that. by then, yeah, Frank. Yeah, I, I hope you I think you need to put your own soon. oxygen might mask be. on first. Yeah. Or your CPAP. Maybe get <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for all of the insight and information. I really appreciate it. And Frank, I think you need to get a little bit more sleep. I'll try. Nancy, thank you so much for being here and being so proactive in getting more sleep. I think you benefited all the family on that. And Dr. Kennedy, thank you for your insight and perspective. It's been great. For all of you watching, please visit Store Brands USA, the channel here on YouTube, or go to storebrandsusa.com for shopping information, recipe ideas, and a lot more. I'm Jody Daly, and I'll see you next time for another edition of Let's Talk. Good night.